Mikey and his magic middies. Will they get you over the line this season? Will Jake have Tedesco this week? Maxi, the consistent keeper. Ryan Hadley, Australia's next test fast bowler. Timmy, the 2020 super coach champion. And Savs, the Newcastle. I mean, Tommy Turbo Tragic. Are you ready for some football? We're ready for some football, baby. Hey, hey. All right, right. Here we go, here we go. Here. You're now listening to the Super Coach Experience Podcast. What is up and welcome back to the Supercoach Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Savage, the coach of the Savage Burbos. The Sunday wrap-up is here and round 17 was a bit of a tricky one. A lot of late outs. A or- lot of origin stars didn't back up. The likes of Lomax, To'o, Luai. Um, there was Harry Grant who didn't back up. All the Cowboys players didn't back up. But all the Roosters players backed up today and... Put 40 points on the West Tigers. Uh, for myself, 1,130. Pretty happy with that. Captain James Tedesco, Dom Young, absolutely helped my side get to that score late in the round. I was looking very, very grim early on and a, a lot of 30 scores and a lot of 25 to to 40 scores. So i um, pretty happy that I got above 1,100, but there are a lot of scores above me around where I'm ranked. So interesting to see where we end up at lockout tomorrow. But wrapping up the week, the Bulldogs defeat the Sharks 15 to 14. Reed Marnie top scores for the Bulldogs 93 points. He's quietly becoming one of the better hooker options in Supercoach. He's done very well. Uh, Max King, 82 points. He looks like a decent front row option. Just keeps running the ball. He's that type of player that just does it for you. Sam Hughes, 65 points. I'm not sure where I sit with Sam Hughes anymore, whether he's going to end up being enough or whether he's going to be um, someone you can just plug and play at any given time. Um, I think maybe you can hold him, maybe you can nuff him. I don't think it's going to hurt you either way. Um, Karaz, Jacob Carraz, 52 points, went to fullback. A lot of people put the VC on him, banked, uh, really hoped that he got a bigger score than he did, but he didn't. So, um, you know, 52 points, he just pretty much based what he's been getting all year. Um, <coughs> Josh Curran, Curran, 59 points, comes back from a shocker last week. Matt Burton, 63 points. Keep an eye on him. He loses about 80K, and I think he's going to be one of the better soup coach 5A options to end the season. Uh, Cameron McInnes for the Sharks, top scores, 105 points. He's going to be a very... Uh, an option people talk about, but probably won't get, to be honest. Sione Katoa, 94 points. Raymond, 86. Britt Nicker went over for a try, 79 points. He looked really good. And one of the more traded in players this week. He makes about 60K and has a five break even next week. So I think he still will be in that top three traded in next week. Uh, Blake Braley, 62 points. But the big one here, Nico Hines, 48 points. He loses a bulk amount of cash. I think he goes down to $745,000 and he has a break even of 128 next week. Plays the Titans. The Titans are coming off a bye and have looked pretty good. So, um, you know, if you've got Jerome Hughes who plays the Tigers next week, I probably wouldn't be rushing to get him in if he's your yeah, avenue to him. Uh, but then in round 19, Nico Hines has the Tigers. Um, but that being said, it's... it's um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Nico Hines, pretty rattled. Like, you miss a field goal from your front. I, I get to pressure situation, and that doesn't translate to super coach points. He still scored 48 points in a team against the best defensive team in the competition at the moment. So, um, you know, people are going to be turned off him thinking, you know, Faye, Nico, maybe Hughes and Cleary are the goes. 48 points in a team that got beaten um, and only scored 14 points. I think he's still probably the best halfback option to end the year. Uh, 3 p.m. Saturday game, the Broncos play the Warriors, and the Warriors got up 32 to 16. Tomorrow, Munn, every time Sean Johnson's out of the side, he goes berserk, 102 points. I know he's a lot of money, but Jesus Christ, I think in the 5'8 spot, he... He could be a serious option, especially I haven't really looked at their draw. Um, I'll have a look into him and, 
you know, speak some stats about him on Tuesday, but I think he's a very good option. Mitch Barnett, 93 points. Fanel Blake, he's really disappointing at the moment. 34 points last week and 45 this week. Going to lose a lot of money. So if you don't have him in your side, I'd be holding off and just waiting uh, for that price drop. And, you know, do you, do you get him in anyway? Like, or do you just fade him? Do you go Haas and, you know, rotate with Curran and May in your front row if you've got them to? Uh, Freddie Lussick, 37. I don't know why I said Freddie Lussick. <laughs> uh, Watini's Lesniak, 36 points on return. I bought him Wade Egan, 35 points. I think I've really got to sell Wade Egan to Harry Grant next week, which is unfortunate, but... Oh, well, uh, Xavier Willison, top scores for the Broncos, 77 points. Corey Jensen, 71 points. Cobbo, 63 points. Not much else doing here. Pierre Curl, 49. Ezra Mann, 44. Not much else doing for the Broncos. I think the Broncos are pretty irrelevant at the moment. Why does that look orange? Um, yeah, they look pretty irrelevant at the moment. I don't think they will be irrelevant all season. I think once Haas and Walsh return and also... Adam Reynolds, they're going to be very relevant. Uh, moving on to the Knights play the Parramatta Eels, and they'll three tons in this game. Bradman Best, 130 points. A lot of people – actually, I had some questions about Bradman Best earlier in the week, and if you jumped on, congratulations, because he had an absolute blinder. But Greggy Marju had a blinder as well. He's going to be looking at about $496,000 next week with a negative five break even, and – You know, KP is returning next year at some point. Oh, sorry, this year at some point in a couple of weeks. I've heard a lot of word that he's going to come in for Fletcher Sharp in, you know, a week or two. It's probably going to be three weeks after their last buy. But, um... Greg Marju at the price, he's, he's a bit of a steal considering last year he averaged 78 points with KP in the side, um... In Supercoach in previous years, he averaged 58 and 55 in sides that were absolutely terrible. So I think the fact that he just averaged that in sides that were terrible without KP, uh, he's priced at a 47.8 average or something. So there's already eight points of value there. If you find him, I guess the problem here is, are we looking at value or are we looking at someone you can have for the rest of the season? Personally, I don't think he's going to be in my plans. I, I'm I'm not that keen on him. I just, he hasn't hit the heights of last year. But I see the appeal. I see the appeal. I'm, I'm not keen on Mulatalo either, to be honest. Mulatalo, 41 points. Very good draw though. So I probably have to, you know, bite the bullet on one of these guys. But Fletch Sharp, 61 points, makes a little bit of money there and hopefully makes a couple of more price rises before KP comes back. Will Price, 60 points, looked pretty good. Hopefully he keeps that 5'8 spot and he'll be available at center wing for $345,000. Kaipi's ball, 34 points. This is a bit of a worry. He played 80 minutes and still pumped out that. I think he definitely goes back to the bench when Lucas comes back. So, um Let's just hope his break even is not too high next week so we can deal with that issue later. Uh, for the Parramatta Eels, Mitch Moses, 103 points. He looked good. It's Mitch Moses week, baby. Uh, Bryce Cartwright, 85 points. He looked very good too. So he's about that Nicara price that you can probably go down to or go up to. I like the look of Cartwright at the moment. Blaze Talungi, 66 points. Dylan Brown, 64 points. Madison got 56 points. Brendan Hands, 28 points. So someone who got him Brendan Hands a couple of weeks ago, just hoping he would play big minutes and, you know, do well for me. Uh, with Matt Arthur coming into the side, he's actually not playing as many minutes. Minutes, So I think I'm going to have to reassess there, to be honest, and maybe look to move him on. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there, but... Yeah, I'm not very happy, to be honest, with uh, how that's played out. The Melbourne Storm defeated the Canberra Raiders 16-6, to and this was a weird game. It wasn't very high scoring for the first half, at least. Bronson Garlic top scored for the Storm, 81 points. Jerome Hughes keeps on keeping on, 78 points. And uh, just how can you let him go for someone like Nico when he's doing so well? I think I want to find another way to do it, but... Yeah, it's interesting to see how that plays out. Sean Bloor, 67 points. Wishart, 53. Jack Howarth went over for a try, 52 points. He makes about 50, 60K. So go, I think he goes up to like 280 or something, and he'll have a negative 22 break even or something. So if he gets a center wing position next week, 
I don't mind it. I don't mind him as an option. Elias Katoa, 51 points. You know, it's one of his quieter games. You'll take it. You'll take it for sure. Um, he's definitely an end-of-season gun. K a week, 66 points, top scored for the Canberra Raiders. If you bought him, you know, prior to round 13, you'd be stoked because he's absolutely killed it. Uh, in actual NRL, he had a bit of a shocker at fullback there, but um, I won't hold it against him. Uh, Tarpanay, 55 points. What else is doing here? Smithy's updated to 38. Ethan Strange down to 35. Um, just a lot of nothing for the Canberra Raiders. The first game today, the St. George Lawara Dragons beat the Dolphins 26-6. Jack DeBellin top score with 90 points. Tyrell Sloan, 89 points. Not much super coach relevancy for the Dragons uh, because Zach Lomax was not there. But for the Dolphins, Max Plath got 59 points, and that's because Jeremy Marshall King went down early in that game. Uh, 17 points didn't come back on. So if you own Jeremy Marshall King, you'd be absolutely stinging right there. That That's a massive blow for owners. Uh, Jermaine Asako, 49 points. Uh, you would have hoped that he could have capitalized on this easier-ish matchup. I know the St. George Lawara Dragons are now in the eight, but you would have hoped he... He um he capitalized, but he didn't. He was on thirty three till about two minutes ago, and he made a couple of tackle busts. I think he got a line break as well late on. So you know you might even down date there, but yeah, not much doing for the Dolphins. This was a lot of a nothing super coach game for the Penrith Panthers, losing to the North Queensland Cowboys sixteen to six. Liam Henry. We call him Postman Pat now because he always delivers when you need him. 68 points for Liam Henry. And I was looking at going Henry to Haas next week. If Henry's break even is pretty good, pretty happy just to hold one more week and then go after the origin period. I think I'll fix up my hooker, hooker spot, go Egan to Harry Grant. Um, but yeah, the Panthers, super coach wise, there's not much. Isaac Tungo, 37 points. So Isaac Tungo now loses 16K, goes to 415K. So him on that right edge with Cleary to come back, I'm eyeing him off massively. I think he's a better purchase than Greg Marju and Renato Mulitalu for the run home. Because I know, we all know Penrith come back with a bang and they've plateaued this part of the season. But they're only preparing for the late end of the season that Penrith Panthers are not worried. Brad Schneider, 66 points. Dane Laurie, 58 points. I know someone in the top 100 have Dane Laurie. Negative 62 break even. So um, he makes like 100K there. So that's actually a pretty good purchase if he's in your five eight spot. Uh, Panthers, Sorensen, 51. Yo, 55. Jesus. Yo, off the bench, 55 points. What a weapon. For the Cowboys, Braden Burns, every time he comes in, he kills it. 71 points. Helam Lukey, 64 points. 422K. Oh, Jesus. Helam Lukey back up to, you know, 480K next week. He He's just a gun in the second row. Went off for HIA. I thought he was gone for the game, but he's not. He came back. Um, just got drink water, 43 points. Finney Fuiaki, 34 points. Um, he's done his job for my side. Oh, he loses a bit of money, goes below 400K again. So um, I think I've got to say goodbye to Finney Fuiaki next week. I've, I've got to decide what to do there. There is another popular player that got injured as well. Uh, moving on to the Roosters versus the Tigers. And Joey Manu went down with what looked like a fract- fractured wrist. Um, it you saw it on the coverage. It was just really loud and there was like a massive snap noise. Joe Manu, he's probably out for like at least four weeks, four to six weeks, I'd say. Is he a sell? I reckon he's probably a sell because realistically you only get four weeks out of him. And let's be honest, he wasn't doing as well for us anyway. He, he does lose about 80K, goes down 600K with that price, which is very annoying. I bought him for 850 so... I'm very annoyed with that because I only bought him out of the fact that I just you just kind of need to have him. I wasn't really – I didn't want to spend that much on him. I like buy, buying players at their lowest, but, you know, I still did it. So, cop it. Oh, I'll tell you what I hate. I've had a lot of people this week saying, oh, I was going to get him Marju this week. Uh, he, um, he was in my plans. If you didn't get him, you made that decision – 
I, I know it's annoying. I know it's annoying saying I was going to get this person if you actually were going to get that person. But at the end of the day, if they scored two, you'd be like, man, I was going to get him. I'm so stoked I didn't do it. So um, f- live by the sword, die by the sword. That being said, I've probably um, probably done that multiple times. So something that irks me probably irks you when I do it as well. So I <laughs> apologize for that. Dom Young and James Tedesco top score with 126 points. This game saved my weekend. Um, a lot of people had the captaincy on Teddy for good reason. He's one of the top scorers of the week. Chupo, 96 points. Watson, 91 points. Terrell May, the buy round. Every time you need him, he's he's exactly like Liam Henry. He just absolutely pumps it out. 73 points. Victor Radley, 70 points. Chupanua, he's going to be like 300K um, playing in the center wings. Does he keep that left edge spot? I don't know who's usually there. Suli is back next week, so maybe he comes back and plays right. Um, but that's only while power goes out. But he's available in second row, about 300K. We've got a Joe Chan issue that we need to deal with, and I just hate the fact that I just can't loop because of Joe Chan, and it's ridiculous. Sam Walker, 61 points, missed a few goals tonight, which was very annoying for owners. Uh, missed eight, missed four goals and only got four goals. So that's very annoying. Angus Crichton, 48 points, one of his lowest scores of the season. So he loses. He was projected 138 this game. He, he actually loses 40K and goes down 780. So hopefully we can lose a bit more cash off Angus. And um, I just feel like he's going to be back at his best next week. He's going to have a rested week this week and look very good. Um, for the Roosters, there's not much else there. But for the Tigers, top score for Neil Paul A. Second top score, Lockie Galvin in a beaded side, 52 points. Absolute weapon this kid is. Hopefully he goes to, you know, like... A, Oh, West Tigers fans don't want to hear me say this, but I'd love to see him at like the Roosters or Penrith. I I just, yeah, he's so small. I don't know what the deal with him is super coach wise. Like, do you hold on to him for the rest of the year? I think over the next two weeks, I'll ride it out till round 19. But just a part of me says he's so small and so young that he's probably going to be injured at some point of the season. And I feel like that's going to be an issue later in the season. So, you know, if his price is big and we're not playing him in, in our 17s, I've got to have a look closer at the draw and maybe that's a topic I'll bring up on Tuesday. Coruscant went, got a Simbin, 24 points. So coming back from reality after that 133-point performance last week, Samuel Afanu, 40 points. Stefano, 46. Ruben Forda, Porter, 48. For people that enough. Oh, went the nuff route of going Ruben Porter last week. That was a good purchase. There we go. Um, cheers for tuning in to the Sunday wrap-up. I know this was a very quick one today, but needed to pump this one out. Um, Mikey and Jake were out. They were both at work, so um, it's always a bit tricky when we have to record after the 6.15 game. They're, oh, shit. Their um, schedule is usually based around the game finishing at 6.30, so most of the time they can make it. But, um, yeah, it's been it's been me solo for the last two weeks. Hopefully you guys don't mind it. Um, I listened back to last week's one. I, I thought I did an all right job, I think, going solo. I, I know going solo sometimes. I just... If another podcast goes solo, I just don't listen to it. But, you know, I'm. if you guys like the solo ones, I am more than happy to jump on and do solo anytime. So if you enjoy the solo ones, please let me know because I will – I know this time of year it's a bit awkward. Like you've already got enough Supercoach podcasts to listen to. Um, but, yeah, anyway – Thank you for tuning in for the Sunday wrap. Uh, We'll see you on Tuesday and good luck with your lockout rank, guys. Cheers.